Hey guys, this is Satyajit Patnaik here and welcome back to my channel. And today's topic is going to be very interesting because I'm going to explain you everything about linear regression. Now, how many types of linear regression do we have? We have simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. On top of that, there are other regression techniques as well. But today's scope is going to be on simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. Let's get started. Now, talking about regression analysis, everybody knows that machine learning is of three types, majorly. One is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is nothing but when you deal with labeled data. That means you know what your dependent variable is, you know what needs to be predicted. For an example, you are talking about frauds and not frauds. You have millions of transactions, you have some fraud transactions and some not fraud transactions and you want to create a model such that when a new transaction comes in, you will be able to predict whether that new transaction is fraud or not fraud. That's going to be a simple case of classification, right? When it comes to classification, I hope everybody knows that there are so many algorithms, decision trees, random forest, XGBoost, AdaBoost, CatBoost, so many algorithms are there. Now, let's say you want to do some sort of predictions on a numerical variable. What does that mean? A simple case is house price prediction. So for an example, you have area, like area in square feet, and you have their respective prices. And you want to predict a certain price given that the area of a flat is some square feet. Quick example, I'll take Microsoft Paint to explain. Now just imagine I have two columns. One is area and one is price. Okay. Given areas, let's say for 300 square feet, the price is 25 lakhs. For 500 square feet, the price is 35 lakhs. For 1000 square feet, the price is 60 lakhs. And for 1200 square feet, the price is 60 lakhs as well. Just imagine I have four, four records, simple. And here, based on my area, I'm going to predict my price. Simple, as I'm predicting price, this becomes a simple case of supervised learning. And as the variable is a numerical variable, we want to predict a certain price at a certain area level. In that case, this particular problem is basically a regression problem. Now, talking about the complexity and talking about the industrial knowledge. To be very honest, regression analysis is one of the least used techniques in industries. Why do I have to say that? Because just imagine as a company, whatever things we capture, be it an MNC company or a mid-level startup or a startup, any data that we capture has a date parameter to it. Now, when you have a date parameter as one of the independent variables, that problem becomes a time series analysis problem. So time series analysis uses the regression techniques, but it is not exactly the regression algorithm. It's a separate algorithm. The way we deal with time series problems are completely different. That is the reason regression analysis is considered as the least, least used in the market and with lowest priority as well. Now, let's try to come to this problem. Let's say we want to predict the price of a, area, of a flat whose area is probably 800 square feet. Now, this is my y-axis that this is my dependent variable and price depends on area. So, area is my x. Simply, as this is a univariate problem, that means I'm having single variable based on which my y is dependent. Let's say I want to plot this graph. In my y-axis is my area. Let's say 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 1000. And on y-axis, I have price. Let's say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, somewhere around 60, somewhere like this. 
and for 1200 square feet one two three four five six seven eight. okay for 1200 we have a data point here for thousand also we have a data point here for 500 somewhere here we have a data point somewhere here just assuming and for 300 it is somewhere here simple now what linear regression basically tells that we have to find a line which passes through all these points and the distance between the respective points from the line should be lowest what does that mean that means if i draw lines there will be n number of lines passing through these points simple we have to find that line which is closest to the data points for an example i'll be taking two examples i'll take this line and i will draw another line in okay let's say we'll have these two lines this is l1 and this is l2 now what we do is we'll consider l1 so we will find the distance from this points to L1 and these are the different distances. We do a sum operation on distance and let's say the value is around 100, just an just example. Similarly, we also find the distance from different points to their lines as well, uh, like this and like this. Okay. So if you identify the distances of the points, to L2 are the closest. That means the distance is lowest. That means my L2 becomes the best fit line. Now considering L2, if I want to predict what will be the value at 800, I'll find my 800 location in my X axis. Let's say 800 he is here and I will find the data point in my Y axis. Let's say it is uh, 5, 10, let's say, I don't know, 50. So this becomes my output. So I'm getting the predictions based on my area. So the simple equation of this L2 line will be Y equals to MX plus C. And we are all familiar with this equation because this is the equation of line and we have studied this in mathematics, right? We know the slope is going to be M and intercept is C simple m is the slope and c is the intercept but what exactly is m and c one day one guy asked me sir can you please explain what is m and c just simple explanation just imagine a line equation which is y equals to 2x plus 3 for different x values let's say x is 0 y equals to 3 y equals to 3 x equals to 1, y equals to 5, x equals to 2, y equals to 7. Now, if I draw a line across these three points, this is what the line of y equals to 2x plus 3 will be. That means the slope is going to be 2. What does this mean? Slope is nothing but change in y divided by change in x. So, the slope is 2 and what is intercept you can see how far is this data point from the center it is 3 units apart so the intercept is 3 simple now coming back to this example which is area versus price this was a very hypothetical example right in real scenarios price definitely depends on many more attributes apart from area right so price will depend on square uh, area it will depend on number of bedrooms it will depend on number of kitchen it will depend on location it will depend on how far how far the house is from the city or market just imagine market and uh, the age of the building and who is the builder right and there are many 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 more features that actually impacts the price right so in these kind of scenarios my equation will not be y equals to mx plus c instead of that how many variables do we have one 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन सो माई इक्वेशन विल सिंपली बी वाई इक्वल्स टू एम वन एक्स वन प्लस एम टू एक्स टू इफ आई हैव टू राइट इट डाउन दिस विल बी द इक्वेशन वाई इक्वल्स टू एम वन एक्स वन प्लस एम टू एक्स टू प्लस डॉट 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 एम एन एक्स एन प्लस सी एंड प्लॉटिंग दैट इन अ टू डी ग्राफ इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज वी हैव सेवन फीचर्स राइट इट विल बी प्लॉटेड इन अ सेवन डायमेंशनल ग्राफ which is beyond the human level of interpretation right we cannot visualize 7d we are not given that privilege by god to interpret something in a seven seven dimensional space okay coming back to the concepts i hope everybody understood about the linear regression problem and how to solve it we will take a small example and try to solve it in today's class so i have a linear regression example so this is uh, this example uses the uses only the first feature so in this example we have many features but we will be first solving the simple linear regression problem we will be taking only one feature based on that we will be predicting the dependent variable okay in order to illustrate a two dimensional plot of this regression technique we will only be using one feature okay the straight line can be seen in the plot showing how linear regression attempts to draw a straight line that will be the best minimize the residual sum of squares between the observed responses in the data set and the responses predicted by the linear approximation so i'm quickly uh importing my libraries so i have sql learn model selection for training and test split i have linear model for my linear regression i have matrix to validate how my model is and i have some math functions and pandas function i am taking the data set from an online uh, location which is www.stat.ncsu.edu i will definitely be leaving this uh, document in the description below as well so that you can run it right and in case you are enjoying the stream please like share and subscribe the channel because that's what youtube all cares about the more the more comments i have in this video the more likes i have probably the video will be recommended to other users as well and don't make uh, don't forget to comment down your favorite topics or any kind of topic which you want me to come up in the future videos and i'll definitely watch out your comment section and come back with your you know i'll be trying to solve what exactly you need right okay i have this data frame i have already read it and my data frame has these many features age sex bmi blood pressure s1 s2 s3 what are s1 s2 s3 now this is a proper explanation to the data set 10 baseline variables are there age sex body mass index bmi everybody knows that average blood pressure bp and the six blood serum measurements each of n equals to 442 that means we have 442 patients data simple as well as the response of interest a quantitative measure of disease progression so basically our y variable is some sort of uh, blood sugar level prediction or something like that the more value you have the more risky you are towards getting diabetes okay so these are the attribute information and moving on i'm doing a head operation so i'll skip it i'm doing info to check how many null values do we have then i'm doing a describe function so to be very honest i'm just being very honest with you guys i haven't performed a detailed ed on this use case but i will definitely recommend you to properly do eda and then jump into the linear regression model building part that will help you out okay so this is how my data looks like here i'm building a small heat map based on my correlation function i hope everybody knows uh, correlation function the value always lies between minus 1 to 1 1 means linearly correlated minus 1 means negatively correlated and a value near to 0 would be like they are not correlated at all so dot is null dot sum is giving me zero that means there are no missing values in the data set 
and then what i'm doing is i'm converting my x data and y data i'm getting my x data from my original data set i'm just taking bmi as my x data and my y data is always y data simple and then i'm doing my training and test split so 80% training data and 20% test data if you want to see the training shape is 353 records so out of 442 the 80% is around 353 and 20% is around 89 this is where i am creating my linear regression model from sqlearn.linear model import linear regression and then i am calling my linear regression model fitting the model with the training data x train and y train and then predicting on the x test data right the concepts are same be it a classification model or a regression model the only difference is that in classification your predictions will only be the class values and if you are doing a predict dot proba predict underscore proba in that case you will be getting a probability matrix but in regression you will be getting a numerical variable a continuous numerical variable for each records in x test simple so i'll be doing this after doing this what i'm doing is i'm just showing you first three records so for three records these are my bmi these are my actual records and these are my prediction records how to find my y equals to mx plus c what is my m what is my c value so in linear regression sqlearn module we already have a function called as coef and intercept which will basically tell you the correlation coefficient and the intercept now my coefficient is 10 and intercept is minus 131 as i have told you that this is your slope and this is your intercept now what will be the equation what is the slope 10 so 10x what is my intercept minus 31 minus 131 so this becomes my new equation right now right so you can see the equation is mentioned here minus 131 plus 10x what is my x x is bmi so here we conclude that the model is ready done now let's say you want to predict on a certain bmi level let's say the patient's bmi level is 31 and you want to predict the blood sugar level if you print it oh my god the blood sugar level is 201 so if the bmi is low the blood sugar level is low simple so now we know that there is a linear relationship between bmi and y that is the reason our linear regression model is giving us good results right here i am printing the coefficients and printing some of the regression matrix and then i am plotting my x test data and my prediction data as well now this is all about simple linear regression right the only task i would ask you to do is if you are following this video and if you have made it till here i will definitely make a multiple linear regression model out of the exact use case but i want to challenge you take it as an assignment practice by yourself and try to implement the same model with multiple features not just with bmi create multiple features you just have to add regressors that's it so you can go ahead and check out some blogs or videos related to multiple linear regression implement those things in the exact piece of code and you will be amazed and you will also be understanding how multiple linear regression works i'll definitely be coming up with a multiple linear regression video very soon till then thank you i hope you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed please like share and subscribe the channel i am planning to uh upload videos every day almost every day might not be possible it's very hectic but at least one shorts a day so i'm aiming be it a shorts or a normal video a video a day has to be launched has to be released on my channel so that's it for my side if you like share uh, if you like my videos please like share and subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified thank you guys